this side. Welcome back <clears throat> to another reading and correcting with me, Kendar, the Tiger Rats, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I read a chapter from one of my stories and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, and if you want to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today, we are doing Chapter 94 of Breaking Step. Tiv's strength lasted until he made it up the stairs. Then his leg gave out, and he slumped against the wall. Are you okay? Jekyll asked. He shook his head, hugging himself. He tried not to think about it. He wanted to forget about that wrongness. How could anything be that wrong? It was beyond something that had been done incorrectly. This was a wrongness that registered almost on the level of the elements. A gong sounded. Tibbs, get up, Jekyll ordered. Whatever was in that room shouldn't exist in the world. <clears throat> he was yanked to his feet. Tibbs, snap out of it. We have incoming. Jekyll was worried and with reason. Thing would end them all if his head rang from hitting the wall, and before he could wonder why, a crowd filled the hall. One brushed against it, and then they roared, and Tibbs was defending himself, understanding the clerks had returned. He blocked with his shield and stumbled against the wall from the punch. He slashed with his sword and missed. What was the point? Three of them came at Tibbs and uh, came at him, and Tibbs had no idea how to jackal barreled through them. Get your head in the now, Tibbs! Sorry. They were fighting. He had to help. Pull his weight. What was the best way to help his team now? Other than Jackal, he couldn't see them. Had it gotten to them? Jackal punched the closest one, staggering it into the others, and faced Tibbs. You need to fight, Tibbs. We're going to die if you don't. A sword came down and sliced through the fighter's side. Jackal! Tibbs etched. Tibbs is etching left and left a golem. Wait, what? Oh, I see. That doesn't go there. Tibbs is etching. Love the golem it touched. The golems it touched slowed. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay. Ice on the golems. It touched. Slowing them. Golem, let me use, please. On the golem, it, nah. Uh, a flaming arrow shattered many, and corruption melted more. Tibbs has stepped between the golems and jackal, his guts leaving ice spreading in the wounds. He blocked another sword, then a punch in the shoulder left his arm. Okay, okay. Um. With his arm dangling. Good holding through. Okay, I left this sword again. Basically, his, the, the punch hit a nerve. His arm is numb. It is then purely through holding on to its essence. Meaning, in his unfeeling hand. Purely through holding on to its essence. Leave him alone. Jekyll broke the golem's head, then had its his back to Tibbs. You good? No, but this is more important than how I feel right now. Don is going to use is going to hate me for this. He added air to his sword. Ike would be needed to to end the filigree. Gur became because otherwise it would be st it would still be too heavy probably. Then fate counteracted Gur's hetherolness, and he really hoped this it didn't blow up. This didn't blow up. His sword launched forward, pulling him off balance until he disconnected it from his hand. He regained his footing in time to catch a blow with his shield and shoved the golem clerk away. 
couldn't do more. Most of his attention was on keeping control of his sword. Ike had given it the motion it needed to fly along with air, but he didn't know of an Arcanist that let him control how it flew, so he needed to will it, and changing the direction it went in, it went in, felt like fighting someone else's arm. It certainly did damage, from what he saw. The blade cut through bodies with ease, leaving fall pieces falling as it mezzed down. The archer dropped and the sword flew over his head. Tibbs! Don yelled. What are you doing? I have control of it. Well, mostly. It was turning around. Just make sure you aren't in the way. That isn't having it under control, the sorcerer countered. A staff caught a blow meant for Don's head. It would be wiser to focus on surviving, so you can then chastise Tibbs on how he is removing many of the golems. He had it now. Well, mostly. He needed to help it along where it wanted to go and use that to get it in the direction he needed it. It meant long loops, but it also sliced apart in the slices sliced parts in the process. He smiled as finally it was returning to him. Tibbs? Chekola asked, something worried. What are you doing? getting my sword back. There was only a few golems left. I think a true golem flesh is going to slice you up. Not if I catch it. He could feel the way it wanted to turn. All he had to do was push it there and it would land hilt first in his hand. His hand didn't rise. Actually, he couldn't feel his arm. A blast of darkness and corruption sent the sword into the wall, its edge passing close enough to Tibbs. Tibbs's face, he made out how sharp it was. That was stupid, I know, he finished for Don. I should just have let the essence go instead of trying to catch it. He suffused himself with purity. That was should what you should have done is how about we let how about you let it go, Don? Jekyll said. That trick made winning a lot easier. You don't usually like easy fight, the sorcerer countered. I also don't usually feel like, he motioned toward the still open door and the stairs. Let's just collect the coins they dropped and go into the rooms they don't, they, they would have, he looked up. None of them made it to their room. Other than the door leading down, they were all closed. Their break is over, Don said. So I expect the dungeon put them back in, that we killed them or not. No making this easy on us. All these are simply tests for us to pass, remember that. Zeko smiled. And a chance to get more of those sheathed sword to sell. Tibbs opened the door and stared. After so many small offices, looking at this vast open space after the short corridor simply didn't feel real. And... It was high enough for a balcony held by four gray columns inlaid with metal. The large stairwell going up them was to his left, blocking his view of that side of the room. Desks with chairs spread throughout. Looks like we're back in the lobby, Jekyll said. Good, Tib said. But the space was what the space was finally registered. The lobby was safe, or as safe as any place within Stowe. I need to rest. Just do the purity thing, Jekyll said, turning his, turning back to the door. I'm taking a break, Tibbs stated, dropping on the closest bench and resting his hand against the cool stone wall. How long have we been at this? Can't see the sky, Jekyll replied, sitting next to him, so I have no idea. I'll go check, Miss said, and headed to the double doors. Tibbs took the package of fr dried fruit out, and before he could eat some, Jekyll offered him bread. The sun's a hand span from the zenith. Uh, a hand span past the zenith, the archer yelled from the door. Comdard offered Tibbs a slice of the cheese. Unless we move on to another building now, this will be the only one we explore, if even that. We have only done half of half of this floor. And I, we can expect as many rooms and fights on the upper floor. We could spend the night, Jekyll offered, taking the slice, the, cl the clerical. The slice from the cleric. <clears throat> oh, yes, the them said gleefully. Please do. They won't, Jekyll replied as the fighter added meat from Don. They aren't the first team to talk about it, but they've been warned. 
when they started coming in, they talked about how they were going to be left in past the closing door if they didn't do what they were told. A few were thrown in, too. They also threw in bodies. I didn't really like those since there was nothing to, to them but absorbing them. They leave before what they call the sun gets too close to where it disappears. This team this teams seems like it could be made not to check with it. Or not to check where it is. This team could looks this team seems like it could be made to not check where it is. Are you telling me to cheat so they'll stay in they'll stay too late? Sto asked, Don't suspicious. No, that isn't that isn't allowed. But that one is greedy, and they don't look outside when they are searching for that loot he loves. With the right distraction, they might forget to pay attention. But you're not saying I need to cheat, Sto said flatly. No, you cannot cheat. But you'd like it. But if they were distracted, Sto mused, I am allowed to adjust the loot distribution for the rest of the building. That is within the rules. Sto, can you warn whatever you're planning? Don't do it. They, they aren't here to think of it as a test. The them said, what can you accomplish within the constraint of the rules? They aren't allowed to be in here when the doors are closed, she stated. Uh, that is not a rule we have implemented, the them replied smugly. It's okay then, Ganny, Tib said. You know me, I like tests. Tib's paws is chewing, trying to work out what Sto was on about. Any time they, they found a way around his test, he complained about having to change them. He suspected it was why Ganny had handled them after a while. Of the two, she was the one who enjoyed them. I can't use coins, Sto said. I'd need to go to use gold to catch their interest, and as and as best as I've worked from their conversation, those shouldn't appear until my fifth floor has been around for some time. That is correct. It is a rare dungeon who has a windfall like this city to build up their reserves. Sto, Kenny warned again in exasperation this time. Okay, then I use rings. I've been dropping those here and there, and them being gold will appeal to the fighter's greed. No, gold's going to get too expensive. Genny, what's the name of that mix you talked about? The one that looks a lot like gold? Brass? She replied uncertainly. Yes, they aren't smart enough to tell it isn't gold, so that's... No, that won't work. That rogue of theirs, the way he senses thing, he might... Okay, what if we distract, distract him with some weave? Genny, is the one you started working on earlier as usable? He won't know it's just a minor thing, so he'll also think it's valuable if the if the fighter asks. What? Can he ask? That isn't... She fell silent. Are you talking about that weave? Yes, that one. We've been playing with making, making useless weave look more like complex one without making them do anything. What was the weave doing? Maybe make them ha feel happier or something like that? Yes, she answered with more confidence. So they'll think it they they'll think they are valuable and secret them away. They'll all they're all doing that now because the guild that sends them in is always taking items that would weaves from them once they leave. I really don't get why. I mean, I understand they're valuable, but the way they talk about it, it sounds like it shouldn't it sounds like it shouldn't need for I don't know. Kenny cut off Stowe's wandering and Tibbs forced himself to continue eating. Was Sto doing what Tibbs thought he was? He was? And, and felling the dam he was doing it? If the goal is to distract them, I don't think adding a ring like that here and there will do much to distract them. You're always putting a variety of item in the loot, in the lot. No, in the loot. They'll just think it's something they hadn't gotten before. Right. I hadn't thought about that about it that way. I mean, I could just put a lot of them, but that'll make them suspicious, wouldn't it? Even the fighter's clever enough to worry what it means. But if we do it in a way where they start expecting the quantity to be ever larger, 
then I can see him demanded they stay even if they realize the door's closing. Are you going to just give them the ring? The rings? To them ask. I will say I can't change the building, so it's that or we let them leave and they might not come back here and we have the same problem next time. And I'll be absorbing them again when they die, so I'm not exactly using up my essence. He paused. There's no pause. But they make a good point. If we just put them in every room, they'll work it out and just go to the last room where there'll be the most of them. Then they'll leave. So she chuckled. That one's easy to solve. We don't put them in every room. We skip some. They'll work it out, Kenny. It's going to make them. It's going to take them six room at the most to figure the pattern, and they're ba and we're back to the same problem. Set them to be random. The dem offered. We can't do that. So Ganey stated, the stow is a dungeon. The sorcerer said it. There are always patterns. And once they notice it, they'll think it's a test. Him and the rogue will be busy working out what it is. The fighter is just going to see loot and the other two just go along with the others. So set the next room to have a ring. Then jump one and put two there. Then put two rings, then there. After that, you jump two rooms, and four rings, and then three, and that's too simple again, Kenny. They'll know the fourth next door after that. They'll know it's the fourth next door after that by then, not fourth, fifth. Why the fifth? Stow asked while Tibbs worked the puzzle. The them chuckled. After that, it's the eighth door. I don't get it, Stowe said, and Tibbs hid his smile by shoving food in his mouth. He got it. Trust me, Kenny said, even they won't get it either. And that concludes chapter 94 of Breaking Step. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be up, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, as well as the other books in the series, they are up on Royal Road. If you want to read ahead of Royal Road and support me in at the same time, that is on my Patreon. And if you want to listen to these, these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I... And with that, I shall wish you a good day.